Okay guys, um, just while I've got a quiet minute here, I'm waiting for videos to render, I thought I'd go through uh, and discuss some of the photos that I took the other day. I uploaded these as a, uh, a photo gallery on Facebook. So what I want to do is just sit there and discuss them. So hopefully this will work. I'm sort of using uh, uh, Open Broadcaster software and I've got a section of um, uh, the Windows uh, s like image preview slideshow thing. So let's go. What we've got here is these are the little 20, 22 millimeter seed plugs or 20 millimeter seed plugs. Uh, I think these are the Jiffy branded ones, and they basically they start off as little discs and they kind of expand out when you fill up with water. Uh, and what I've got here is I've got a, an old stainless steel nail that I've used to uh, poke holes in the top of these, and uh, then I've pushed in sunflower seeds into each one and I'm going to be sprouting out sunflower seeds like this for the next couple of weeks, I think I've got 150 seeds. So as soon as all of these have sprouted, I'll go on and get the next batch done. Uh, so these will then go into grow bags, which will go in the outside garden. Uh, it's, it's going to be quite a big undertaking, but we're going to end up with tons of, um, well, pretty much, yeah, hopefully tons of sunflower seeds out of it. Okay, so can I go on to the next one? There we go, cool. Okay, so we're out in the garden now. This is the broad bean, um, bag this one I think has um, 11 in there I might have packed them in a little bit too much uh, I was basically basing this on how they were planted in the field across the road the other uh, the other year uh, and they, they were kind of in about like a four inch spacing which uh, which might have been a bit too close I'm, I'm not really sure but they're, they're dwarf plants they should grow up about three feet tall and then I'll just cut the whole lot off once uh, once they got seeds these ones they they kind of they grow up and then the seed pods sort of grow out the side of the stalk uh, in between the leaf nodes um, I'm hoping that I get a good harvest out of this uh, I've not grown these sort of beans before I've only ever grown the the climbing um, runner beans uh, I've grown, I'm going to be growing those as well and I saved seeds from last year for those uh, so I've got new seeds and I've got seeds saved from last year uh, we'll probably do a bit of a comparison to see how they go. I'm not sure whether the ones last year were an F1 hybrid or not. If they were, they might come out a bit weird. Uh, and I think I've got a photo later on of the Marifat peas that I planted out. Um, which I suspect, I don't know the where they came from. They were just like, you know, a bag of peas that I bought uh, for my dry store. Um, so if they're F1 hybrids, then you'll get, when, the, when you grow on the seeds from those, you get like, um, one of each parent plant. It's like a random mix of the two parent plants. Uh, so an F1 hybrid is made, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure F1 hybrids are made, you get like plant A, plant B, breed them together and then you get hybrid seed. And that's a little bit like a, a mule where it's like a donkey and horse. Um, and generally if you then plant a seed from a hybrid, it then goes out randomly and you get aspects of both parents. So it might be that I get like a weird mix of seeds. The ones that have grown through so far, just you know, they're only about half an inch to an inch tall, all look identical. But I, that doesn't really mean anything. So this might be a complete failure. It might be not be. Uh, but these guys are uh, these are F1 hybrids. These beans, um, but they were bought from a store as like seeds. So these should all come out pretty much identical. Right, oh, there's one of the, the close-in ones. Um, it took a long time for these to grow through. It took about uh, almost, uh, I think over a month for these to actually break through the surface. Uh, and I dug one up in a video um, last week because I was concerned that, like, you know, they'd all died or something. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, yeah, like a uh, very nice looking plant so far. And they're, they're starting to push through. It's probably about half of the ones that I planted have now sprouted. Uh, okay, so we've got a kale. These are now getting so big that I'm starting to move them around and spread them out. I've moved this one over to the other grow bed tray. Um, what I'm going to do is start uh, pulling off the bigger leaves on these soon and uh, and eating them. So that'll be my, my first fresh vegetables for the uh, for the year. These are the other kale. You can see there's the hole in the middle where I pulled one out. These smaller ones, I think, are just getting a bit shaded by things. Um, one interesting thing that I've noticed is that they they kind of they close up at night and then they open up during the day, which is quite cool. I've, I've never noticed that with uh, with kale before. Um, I've only grown it infrequently, but I've always grown it outside. This is the first time I've grown it in the polytunnel. Um, and in the in the polytunnel now, it's actually pretty warm during the day, so we're getting good like good warm daytime temperatures. But it's still not 
freezing, but it's 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 still you know sort of four or five degrees at night, which is a bit too cold. So this is my pack choy. The seeds planted here were uh, a variety pack, so it was basically a packet of seeds with loads of like mixture things in there. Um, one thing I've noticed is that this plant here, that plant there, this plant and the little one next to it have all bolted. Um, I don't know if this is a, just a weird thing. Um, I started these off in December, so they've been in the ground since December. They started to like sort of sprout in um, uh, kind of like mid-January, late January. And, and now, that, now that it's warmer in there, they've actually like hit and they've, over the last month, they've, they've grown huge. But they've they've um, they bolted. And I'm not sure if that's because of the sudden change in temperature to a warmer temperature or not. Uh, they've been in the grow bag, so they're getting pretty much constant moisture levels. So temperature change is the only thing I can think of. Uh, yeah, if anyone knows anything about that, that would be really interesting to to find out. Uh, okay, tilt your head sideways, guys. I should have rotated this image. <laughs> uh, what am I talking about? Ta da! Um, these are the garlics. Uh, I saved these from um, the tire garden. In fact, I was mucking out some of the tires and, and putting them into the putting all the soil in there and the weeds and stuff into the compost bins. And and these guys are sitting there underneath all the, like the the weeds. So I pulled those out. I stuck them in some grow bags. Um, they look pretty crap. Uh, they are now doing much better. So I'm, I'm kind of glad that they've start they've uh, they've grown up uh, and they've set out new leaves now. So they're they're they're, they're growing up nicely. Uh, again tilted right these are the cabbages these have been growing really tall and spindly um, I can't remember the type they might be Savoy I'm not sure um, they're growing really tall and spindly and falling over uh, I don't know why um, yeah if uh, I've not I've not grown cabbages before so I, I've been asking around on the forums and the, the Facebook groups um, but if anyone has any information that would be great um, they don't look too bad and they're not bolting they're not like setting out flowers or anything um, they're just very very tall which is odd um, or it might be perfectly normal I don't actually know <laughs> uh, this is again another one let me rotate that uh, as you can see kind of like the spindliness here I don't know if I can zoom in yeah there we go Wow, this is cool. This uh, this open broadcast software, I am well happy with that. But you know, this is a plant about blogs. This is a blog about plants, so I should probably stop talking about software. Uh, yeah, so these guys growing up, they're setting out new leaves every every uh, every three or four days now at the moment. Um, this is a a better view of that one that's bolted. You can probably see. No, you can't. But there's like a little flower head growing inside there. Um, I'm not sure what that means. So, and oh right, you might be able to see in this one. Uh, the photo's not good enough. There is a little, uh, there's a little flower bud happening in there as well, which is yeah, a little bit disappointing. I don't know what it means though. Uh, right, these guys are the potatoes. These were uh, potatoes that I got. Oh, I can't remember where I found them now. I think they were in the. Um, They were in storage. They were in storage. The bucket that I had them in had a wooden lid with a hole in it for pulling the lid off. So I opened up the bucket after about three months over the over the winter. I put probably put these in storage in uh, October time. <laughs> so I opened them up and they'd all sprouted up towards the hole. So I had like loads of long shoots. So I got the shoots that I got and just shoved them in grow bags to do something with them. Um, Mark had a great suggestion the other day about how to get these out without damaging the roots too much. Uh, the roots are starting to poke through the bottoms of the bags, uh, basically by turning them on their side and rolling them gently and then pulling the bag off and then sticking them in a bigger grow bag. So I've been busy doing the potato tower experiments and the potato grow bag experiments at the moment. That's been a lot more work than I thought it would be. Um, but as soon as I've, I've got that sorted, I'll stick these into some bigger grow bags. Uh, yeah, so something with the potato tower experiments I noticed is no dig doesn't mean no work. Um, in fact, no dig means lots of lots of digging. So there's a nice close-up photo of the potato leaves there. Uh, no problems with blight or anything so far. Right. Okay. So these is so this is the the first um, experimental potato tire. I just stuck some spare 
uh, potatoes in these. Uh, this one has three tyres stacked up, potatoes planted in the gaps between. Uh, I need to modify the way I've done this with the new tyres, but that's um, I'm glad I actually did it this way because I found the problems with uh, stacking them up this way with spaces in between. So for the real experiment, I'll fix that. Um, it doesn't look like I'm going to have enough room to put that in, so what I need to do is build another grow bag tray. Uh, originally what I wanted to do was start all of the potatoes experiments on the same day, uh, and actually I've realised that's like completely infeasible, the amount of work it takes to fill up the grow bags. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm recording the dates that I started, and then I'll take it 60 days on and then harvest them, I think, depending on what the harvest times are there. The, the, growth rate, uh, the growth period in the Casablanca is supposed to be about 60 days, so I'm going to set reminders for 60 days time after each set of plants was planted to check those and see whether they're ready to, to dig up. Uh, this is in one of the, the grow bags I made myself. Um, they do look much nicer, but they're a lot of work to make. Uh, I know I said I was going to do a tutorial on how to make them, but to be honest, it's it's so much work making them that I've just gone with the cheaper sandbags uh, because they do the same job. They don't look as pretty, but they save me like hours and hours and hours of time making bags. And I would have had to make hundreds of these bags. So, yep, this is uh, another potato planted. Um, what I was going to do was bank these up as they go. Um, I think this is a Maribel potato. I don't think it's determinate. So, uh, sorry, I think it is determinate, so it probably won't deal with banking. It, it won't like set extra tubers further up. Um, right, these are the the sandbags. So these are basic, um, like standard sized polypropylene sandbags. They should be fairly UV resistant. I say should be uh, because they're sandbags designed to sit outside for for years at a time. I have some of these from last year and they have all survived, um, but we'll, we'll find out probably in a couple of months time in the height of the summer when these all turn into dust. Uh, but they, I think they should be alright, but th that's more experimentation. These ones here just have scrap potatoes and I think the two ones at the back there have um, marrow fat peas in them which are a bit more of an experiment as I said earlier. Uh, they're sitting in the grow in the the top, so the top is set. The frames made out of two by fours, and the top set in there. That seems to be working brilliantly so far. Um, I today went out and filled up all of the. So I've now got the six sandbags for the potato tower experiments. They're all like weighed, plant planted, weighed, serial numbered, and in the system. Uh, the larger grow bags which I think are about eight or nine gallons um, they were slightly larger than I thought they would be I haven't worked out the volume exactly on them yet via uh, measurement uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out tomorrow and measure the uh, finish planting those out I got four of them planted today I need to do two more uh, and those are serial numbers 7 to 12 of the of the bag experiment um, each of those has a Casablanca seed planted in it uh, halfway up the bag and uh, and they're basically going to be the the, the first set of experiments for, for this year for potatoes and that's just seeing how the grow bag size affects the yield um, I'm not I can't I can't quite visualize how it is so I've got like the the four gallon sand four gallon ish sandbags and then the much rounder um, eight or nine gallon bags uh, so there's a, a uh, I, I, I'm linking it on Facebook every time I update it but there's a, a page of my blog uh, with all my notes for that experiment and all my measurements so if you want more information you do that and I'll uh, go there I'll stick a link in the description of the video as well uh, this is just the overflow into the uh, the fish tank not sure why I put a photo of that in there but yeah there you go it looks nice little bubbles and stuff <laughs> okay this is the beetroot uh, this is another plant that I've never grown before um, so what I'm going to do is keep track of this. This has been growing since uh, late December where I planted it out in the barrel system. Uh, the plants are now probably about six to, to eight inches tall and uh, yeah I, I, I'm just keeping an eye on those. I, I don't I don't really know what uh, what to expect with that. So 
yeah, uh, but be basically as soon as these are beetroot sized I'm going to pickle them and uh, they're going to be a great snack. This is the kale which is in the, the first bucket in the uh, the bucket system. And those buckets I'm, I'm not really happy with the design, I'm probably going to get rid of them and replace, use that space next to the, the overflow for a um, like a radial uh, or like a moving media filter or something. Uh, but for the time being it's got these in it and the kale's growing up, I, I'm thinning it out occasionally and what I'll probably do is just mow the top off um, in a little while and probably um, either use it fresh or dry the leaves and dry, dry them as like a, a for storage and have, a, have an experiment with that. Uh, right, Whoop, there we go. These are the overflows from the, uh, from the sump. Sorry, the, not the overflows, this is the pumped feed from the sump going into the grow bag trays. I basically run that manually at the moment because I haven't got time with a low enough resolution. It needs to go for about two minutes. Um, so every time I walk through the poly tunnel to do something, I'll turn it on as I go through. You've probably seen me do it in the videos. Walk past, do something, come back, turn it off again. Uh, oops, wrong button. Uh, that's the same again. And that's the same again. I've got multiple pictures of those. Uh, right, these are the smaller kale. These were planted later in uh, beginning of February, I think. Uh, and these are doing really nicely. And they haven't bolted. Uh, or well, they're not showing any signs of that. So these are now looking like they might be the good ones to eat. Uh, I'll keep you updated on these. These are in one gallon grow bags. Uh, have I got any more photos? No. So yeah, these, these, these kale are in one one gallon grow bags, um, which seems to be about the right size. Okay, this is the outside garden, you see the tire garden as was. Um, basically I've bagged up all of the soil from the potatoes to leave that to like, um, kind of weather itself for uh, for a year or so. Probably what I'll do is I'll use this in mixes that aren't going to have potatoes in them. Uh, what I need to do is empty out all of the potato towers. I'm going to take this net and I'm going to bin it. This is one of the old fish tanks which I need to move out of the way, but unfortunately we've got trees in the way. I need to chop up all these trees. I've gradually been doing that and I need to trim the tops of these trees back. And that's going to get as much light into the polytunnel as possible. Uh, even the having taken out three of the trees... Did I have a photo of that? No. So even having taken out the three trees in the corner here, that... Um, made a massive difference to the amount of light and warmth getting into this into the poly tunnel. So I'm gonna carry on trimming these back over the next uh, over the next couple of months. Uh, that's a picture of the ladder that we're using. So basically I've been going up, climbing up about ten feet and chopping them off. Uh, that seems to be fine. They're evergreens, they shouldn't have any problem with that. Uh, my neighbour's a tree surgeon so he's 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 basically said yeah it shouldn't be a problem. Um, these are Leylandi. I think they're pretty much impossible to kill. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I know at our old place someone had planted tons of them in the garden and we, uh, we we had a lot of trouble stopping them from growing. Okay, I think this is the last photo. This is just how I've been starting my seeds recently. Oh, excuse me. Oh wow, we're coming up on 20 minutes as well, so I'm probably going to cut this short. Or try to, try to wrap up. So yeah, this is how I've been growing my seeds. These are the little seed plugs, you can get 200 of them for about... 10 or 15 pounds on eBay I think uh, and they're nice and easy to use um, and I'm liking that and it's just it's not a, like a low mess way of starting seeds uh, I've also been using these little boxes that um, Carl gets his bagels and stuff in um, as sort of like little propagators because they hold water in the bottom and they've got like a little lid it's, you know, it's, it's almost like a perfect thing and they go in the bin there's like one of them in the bin every other day so uh, starting seeds in these seems to be working quite well right uh, so these are the uh, Casablanca seed potatoes that they've been chitting on a windowsill um, in these boxes for about three weeks at the point that this photo was taken. I've since moved them, they're in the shelf behind me just uh, chilling out and over the next couple of days I'm planting those out so I'm not too worried about them being in the office. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see, oh right, these ones uh, I cut in half. You should be able to do this, basically what you do is you get the potato, you cut it down the middle making sure you've got eyes on both sides and a bit of the core on both sides, like the central bit of the potato. And then you basically need to keep those humid for uh, for a couple of days. So what I did is I put them all underneath um, a dishcloth with like water on it and uh, I did that. And what happens is the, the potato heals and grows new skin over the top of the thing. I don't know if I've got a photo of that. No, I don't. That's the last photo. 
so yeah, these are all healed up. These ones, uh, basically we've got six of these grow going, or already gone into the um, uh, into the, the sandbags. We got six of them currently in process of going into the bigger bags. We've got six of them that are going into the, the old style tire towers, similar, basically replicating what I did last year to experiment with it. And the six of them that I've cut in half are going into the, the new tower stack design that you saw a photo of um, earlier, and I think I've shown it in a couple of the blog videos. Okay, great. So I just hit 20 minutes on this. I don't know if anyone's actually going to watch it, but hopefully it's uh, hopefully it's got a lot of interesting information. I know I put like little informa uh, little bits of text on each of the the images in the um, in the video, but if you've sat through and watched, uh, thanks for watching. Um, Hopefully it's been informative. If you have any questions, stick them in the comments below, or stick a you know ask me on Facebook. Uh, I'm always around. So great, yeah. Thanks very much for watching. Rock on, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.